Hey y'all, welcome back. Stay tuned for this video where I show you how I've updated the X100 Infinity Wing design with improved structural integrity, some big aerodynamic improvements, and she gets a killer upgrade with landing gear and rudder functionality. Welcome to 3D AeroVentures. Before we get started, I'd like to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, the Park Flyer Podcast. Hosts Mike, Jay, and AK Mike have a breadth of knowledge in RC and full-scale piloting, and they're just great guys. They publish a monthly podcast discussing the ups and downs of the electric RC pilot. Check them out at parkflyerpodcast.com, on their YouTube channel, or wherever you like to download your favorite podcasts. And a big announcement for the web store at 3dAeroVentures.com. Along with selling the digital files for all of my designs, I'm now offering 3D printing filaments. Starting with a filament that I've fallen in love with, which is especially well suited for RC aircraft, ColorFab LWPLA. LWPLA is a 3D printing material that foams as it prints. When paired with the structural design style of 3D AeroVentures designs, you get a lightweight yet strong aircraft which is a combination we strive for in the RC flight community. In celebration of this launch, I'm offering 10% off of your LWPLA purchase from now until March 31st, 2021. The nice thing about this partnership is I'll be able to offer some combo deals when you combine a digital aircraft file set purchase with a filament purchase. So head to 3dairventures.com and sign up for email notifications at the bottom of the page if you want to stay tuned on future deals. Finally, and most importantly, a huge thank you to my customers and the 3D AeroVentures community for your support and feedback over the last year. I launched the X100 Infinity Wing on the website a year ago, and a bunch of RC pilots have had success building and flying this unique design. But a bunch of pilots have also had build and flight issues like this. and like this vicious spin of death. With sufficient airspeed, the original Infinity Wing design flies on rails. But get it too slow, at too steep an angle of attack, and it can fall into an unrecoverable stall. So this happened to several pilots, primarily during hand launch, if the Infinity Wing was thrown too steeply or not strong enough to get the airspeed up right away. So one of my customers said, Hey man, why don't you design a takeoff dolly so we don't have to hand launch this thing anymore? And I thought that was a good idea. Now this isn't a long-term solution to some aerodynamic problems with the original design, but I thought it was a great idea for a quick band-aid fix I could provide pilots while I work on a more involved redesign. So I dove into my CAD model to design a simple dolly that the aircraft can take off of and the dolly stays on the ground. As you can see here, the design is made up of simple flat parts that are keyed together and permanently glued together with super glue to make a box style dolly. The top saddle matches the shape of the wing's airfoil and there are short pegs sticking up in front of the wing for the aircraft to push the dolly along the ground until it picks up enough airspeed to lift off and clear the pegs. I added as many lightning holes as possible to keep the dolly lightweight, and I just scaled up the wheel that's housed inside the Infinity Wing's belly to make the four larger 3D printable wheels. With the dolly design done, printed, and assembled, I headed to the flying field on a windy day to test it out. My first takeoff attempt was a little scary. With about a 10 mile per hour headwind, I was shocked how quickly the aircraft lifted off the dolly. But I was able to steady the aircraft and brought it back down for some more practice runs. And after a bit of practice, I had it lifting off the dolly in a much more controlled manner. Hand launching a 3D printed aircraft can be a bit daunting, so being able to use this takeoff dolly is actually pretty satisfying. One thing I would suggest though, is to bring a buddy with you to the flying field to help clear the dolly from the runway. Chasing this little guy down with a slight headwind while keeping one hand on the controls proved problematic, but comical. Once in the air and up to speed, the original version still flies wonderfully. 
but some design changes could be made to improve the aircraft's stability and stall performance, as well as its overall strength and printability. So I headed back to the drawing board to develop version 2 of the Infinity Wing. Let's first take a look at what's likely causing some odd stall performance. I'll rotate to a side view and hide the left wings so we can more clearly see the cross section of each wing. And I'll draw a line through the center of each cross section to help illustrate what's called the angle of incidence for each wing. As you can see, the angle of incidence for each wing is identical, set to zero degrees. In flight, this means that at any angle of attack, both wings are providing about the same amount of lift. At a very high angle of attack and at slow speeds, both wings will stall at about the same time. All of the control surfaces are on the back wing, so if it stalls, it could lead to a total loss of control. This rear wing is so far back, it needs to act more like a horizontal stabilizer than a lifting wing in order to create better pitch stability in flight. So I rotated the angle of incidence of the rear wing to be three degrees downward. This provides some downforce, much like a typical horizontal stabilizer would, allowing for a more forward center of gravity position and increased pitch stability. It also means in a stall condition, the front wing should stall before the rear wing, allowing the pilot to regain control of the aircraft since the control surfaces will have enough air flowing over them to remain effective. With the aerodynamic concerns addressed, I also wanted to improve the aircraft's strength and ease of 3D printing. Strength hasn't been an issue with this aircraft under normal forces of flight, but the single wall construction of most 3D printed planes is notoriously weak, and any rough landing will likely cause damage that normally wouldn't happen with a traditional built-up balsa and plywood RC plane. So based on some suggestions from a few customers, I set out to improve the strength of the actual skin of the aircraft. I settled on what I call a sandwich structure design methodology. The skin in the CAD model is designed to be a few millimeters thick, but to keep weight down, the slicer settings are set to print the parts with a single perimeter and a small amount of infill sandwiched within the skin, usually around 5% infill. The result is a very smooth outer surface with the strength benefits of a honeycomb structure incorporated into the skin itself. It's light and strong, much like a corrugated plastic sheet. One great thing about this sandwich structure design is it takes advantage of newer lightweight materials like ColorFab's LWPLA without sacrificing strength. It even makes it possible to 3D print very large aircraft out of LWPLA, like I did with this 82 inch wingspan twin super chipmunk design. I know I'm teasing you a little here, but I'll have more on this behemoth in my next video. LWPLA is a bit more flexible than standard PLA, PETG, or ABS, so to further increase the strength and rigidity of the fuselage, I designed a tray system that when printed from a more rigid plastic like standard PLA, creates a strong spine throughout the length of the fuselage. These rigid trays are designed to simply slide into place during the fuselage assembly process. Another big benefit of this joined wing design is it has a lot of structural integrity with the wings connected together at the wing tips. But I still added carbon fiber tubes at the wing roots to increase strength. With the belly landing version of the Infinity Wing done, I also thought she was due for an upgrade. A bunch of users have been asking for a version with traditional landing gear and rudder control, so I designed a separate fuselage design which is compatible with the same wings as the hand launch version. I removed the belly wheel housing and designed the main landing gear to be bolted on as a separate hatch. Housed underneath this hatch is the rudder servo. As you know, I love using these brass threaded heat set inserts throughout my designs for creating strong permanent threads for bolting things together, so I did the same with this landing gear hatch. I designed a guide tube inside the fuselage for the rudder push rod and the tail wheel is simply bent from 2mm diameter steel wire and glued into the rudder. I printed my new prototypes entirely out of LWPLA, other than the landing gear strut and the fuselage trays, which were printed from standard PLA for its rigidity. With the updated and upgraded version of the Infinity Wing completed and built, I couldn't wait to take it out to the field for its maiden flight.
One of the most powerful similarities I've found between the RC hobby and 3D printing is the sense of community they each provide. In an era where news outlets and social media interactions are becoming more and more negative, I found the in-person and social media interactions I have with people in the RC hobby and 3D printing communities is overwhelmingly positive. I know no community is perfect, but we share our successes and failures. We give each other criticism on projects in order to make them better, not with the intent of tearing each other down. Beginners within the community come to the table with a ton of curiosity and an eagerness to learn from others, while the experts, more often than not, come to the table with the patient heart of a teacher. Even then, I get the sense that the experts within these communities know that the learning never stops. It's easier said than done, but what if we approached all of our social interactions this way? Thanks for watching, and as always, I encourage you to never stop exploring, never stop questioning, and never stop playing.